Hey there, it's me, Katie Beth, again. And today, while I was at Michael's, um, I actually was supposed to be headed home, but I had a 60% off coupon, and it kind of can't shop when you have a coupon that great. Um, and I wasn't shopping for this, but I found it. It's a kit to make moccasins. And let me show you. They do come in different sizes, small, medium, or large. It's not focusing that well. I got the medium. It says that they are in women's sizes, but if you're a man, just get the size bigger. Which, if you have large feet, these probably wouldn't fit because it only goes to a women's 10, 11. But I'm actually pretty excited. Just going to tear these apart and see how long it takes me to make these. It looks like it should be pretty easy. And I do need some new house slippers. Uh, my roommates are totally against wearing shoes in the house. But I did ask, and I was told I can wear house slippers as long as they're only in house slippers. So uh, let's open this up. Let's see. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, let's see what we got. This is everything in the pack. Uh, it's a nice little cushion, I guess, for your feet. Just checking how it folds around that. So that's a cool sole on that. And the back of these, you can kind of see how they're going to come together to make the heel. And we have some string and the tops. And I'm not sure what the strap is for yet, but I'll find out. Okay, now I just wanted to look at this cushion for your feet, the sole. It looks like it's just uh, some foam. Okay, now to start out, I'm kind of following the directions, but they're super wordy and uh, boring and hard to read. So I'm just starting the knot like it shows in the picture. And then from here on out, I'm pretty much just going to speed the rest of this up because I do not have the patience to uh, sit and watch this get sewn together, even though I did it. Um, what I didn't quite show here is that I think there was a little um, different shaped notch hole on the outside of the big part of the sole to match up where you should start. So it did kind of have a starting area. So now I'm just going to sew these all together and it's kind of an over under. Not over, well, it's just like making a stitch over all of it instead of going back and forth. And if you're not interested in watching this entire process of sewing a shoe together, uh, just go ahead and skip towards the end with like with my actual review. But just in case you are interested, I'm going to show you pretty much showing, sewing this entire shoe together. And I did have a little bit of a problem there. So sometimes I did have to go back and undo things, but it wasn't that hard. And there were a few sections where I just had to go back and re-tighten what I had done because it wasn't tight enough. And for this kind of shoe, you kind of have to make all of your stitches super tight. And later on, I also learned that towards the back too, to make the shoe smaller to fit my foot, I had to pull the strings really tight. It also helps uh, on all the puckering. So I did end up skipping through part of it. Um, sorry if you wanted to watch the whole thing getting sewn. It just did end up getting kind of boring watching the same, same stitch over and over again. But it was just that same stitch over and over again. So you didn't really miss anything. But I wanted to skip for forward to this part and show you that at the end, I didn't know what to do with that string. And the directions didn't say what to do with the leftover string. Or maybe it did and I just skimmed over it and didn't really read it. 
but I couldn't find it so I just made a little knot and kind of left it there. And because the other side ended with the knot on the inside, uh, the first side I went back and redid and put the knot on the inside also. Because it seemed weird if you had one shoe with a knot inside and one shoe with a knot just like hanging out. So I kind of just tried to make them matching. So next we tackle the back, the heel of the foot. And there's all these different holes and they kind of match up with different shapes to let you know like which one should go there. So I think it's for the different sizes. And depending on how tight you put the holes together is how tight the size will fit together. So here I'm looking at the actual picture in the directions of what it's supposed to look like. So it kind of gave me a little image. But I didn't really understand the directions, of course, on what it was actually saying. So I just tried it out. And here's where I should have stopped and snipped that in half. Because they do give you five strings, two for sewing together the body of each shoe. And then the other fifth one is supposed to be cut in half and shared between the two to sew the back together. And good God, I take a long time to do this. This is even sped up. So I, again, I'm making sure there's half there, which is absolutely ridiculous because that would just mean I'd have a giant bow hanging out of the back. But I think in my head, I thought that the extra strings were gonna be used to tie on that leather band. I did find out that that long strip le leather band is supposed to be the, uh, like kind of the band around the shoe to give it more strength and stability. And there's a little cute little X on the inside. And so I did, so I figured out how to get the back of the shoe tied together. And here you can see I'm trying to fold over that extra piece of leather because I used this, made it the smaller size. It had a little extra hanging over. And I didn't know if I was supposed to sew that in to kind of tie it in or if I was supposed to cut it off. In the end, I decided just to leave it. And eventually, I thought maybe later I'd cut it smaller if I needed to, in case I needed the bigger size. I didn't want to cut off the piece that I would need. And here's where I realized that I'm gonna need a lot longer string than just those halves to do that, especially since I need to do that little bow in the front. And I'm measuring it out. And also realizing that the leather strap's a weird size. But here I'm trying to count out how I would be doing that. And I did finally just undo it again and take it off and cut that string in half to get that little bow in the back. And that way it's not the giant strings hanging out. And so now I'm using the other string to tie on that band. And I am trying to get it centered in half. And here I'm trying to center it from the back so that there's an equal amount, amount in the front to make that little bow. And I did kind of have to like slowly go through each layer here just because it was so thick, it wouldn't go through all of the layers at once. So I kind of have to like go through a little bit of one and then go through another layer. There's me trying to poke through that layer there. But once you get past that back heel, it does get a lot easier. And then the stitch you're just going in and out all the way around until you get to the front and you have the two sides, hopefully kind of equal. And then you just make that little bow up front. And I did find out that if you need the foot part to be tighter, uh, you just pull those strings a little tighter around that, that have that band around and it'll kind of tighten the shoe to be a little tighter, which I've had to do. And here I get back to that string that I just had left over. And I don't want it to bug my foot, especially since it has that hard like lace part on. I don't remember what that threading part's called. But anyways, it's still, uh, it makes it easier to thread it through here. I'm just hiding it like you would in like crochet, where you hide the extra string by sewing it through. And I'm just sewing it behind the uh, band stitches, I guess. So kind of so it'll hide that extra string up on the top in the band and it won't itch my foot. 
can see. It just hides right up there and it's honestly never bugged me. And I do the same thing on the other side. Where I just push it through and hide it in the edge of the strap or edge of the band. But I hide it up there so that little uh, pokey part won't, part won't bug my foot. And here you go, here's one full shoe made. And I just gotta make the other side. And here I have both shoes made, doing a little tappy tap, tap tap tap. Really cool. So I don't feel like they came out quite as cute as the ones in the wrap, in the package, in the picture, but they're still like pretty cute. Uh, I might need to tighten the laces up a little more. They are really, so they're not like normal shoe moccasins where you have the sides, because it's like completely open on the side. And they did feel a little better when I had socks on. Um, the texture on the inside might feel like if I don't wear socks, it might get a little sweaty. Look at me. Cute little shoes. They look like little booties. <laughs> so that is what the moccasins from Michaels turn out looking like. Uh, it took me about, ooh, so it took me about three hours to put both of them together, but that's also with me taking a lot of texting breaks and uh, getting a little distracted and all the mistakes I made. Well, thanks for watching my review or opening of the uh, Michael's Moccasins. So in the store, I believe they were like $21.00. And I used a 60% off coupon, and I saw that it gave me like $15 off. So there were a little more than 10 bucks for these little, ugh, for these little ladies, guys, girls, shoes. I don't know if shoes are boys or girls, but uh, they're kind of fun. So I hope this video was useful or somewhat entertaining. And thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs> I never know what to say, but thanks for watching. Uh, again, these were the Moxins from Michaels. Have a great day.